Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries. 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. So I'll chat for a little bit so you have time to go get it if you haven't gotten it yet. So, Jesus is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Are you going to have Holy Spirit laughter or what? Maybe. I don't know, but my knee feels pretty good. <laughs> hey. It's feeling good. Yeah. Hey. Awesome, God? Yeah, he yeah. is. Okay. So, and I, I would like to remind you, too, I say this often. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that you have to be served communion by some preacher or any particular person. It doesn't say that. Jesus just said, and Paul said, as often as you do this, remember. Remember. You could, you could take communion and remember the cross and the empty tomb every day. You can remember the gift every day. So he just said, when you do it, remember me. Remember me. Yeah. So you can take it every day. You can take it whenever you feel impressed you need to take it. Some people take it because it reminds them of what Jesus did on the cross when they have a sickness. And so some people take it and actually experience a healing because they are remembering that by his stripes we were healed. When were, they take yeah. were the past tense. Peter, when Peter said it after the cross, it was a past tense word. By his stripes you were healed. Were. Were. Mm -hmm. Past tense. He, he paid for it. Jesus paid a great big price for you to walk in healing. So, that night, before he was going to the cross, knowing what was ahead, he pulled out the middle matzah in the Passover meal, Passover steak. He pulled it out. It was the one in that pocket that was declaring the Messiah. Basically, he was saying, he said, this is my body that is broken for you. And when you do this, remember me. And so when he pulled the middle matzah out, which was represented the Messiah to come matzah, when he pulled that out, he was declaring, I am Messiah. Yes, yes. So he said, when you do this, remember me. So what we want to do is spend a moment remembering what he took upon his body on the cross. We've already said by his stripes we were healed 2,000 years ago. On his body, he took all sin from Adam until he comes back. All sin. And a lot of times we kind of dwell on that. We think, oh yeah, he took the murderers and he, he took all of those traffic, things that they've done to traffic kids. But you know what? He also took those moments I was selfish. He also took those moments I was prideful. He also took those moments when I said an unkind word to somebody. He took that too. He took all sin from Adam until he comes back. He took all of the curse that we all deserve from Adam until he comes back. He took shame because when we recognize that we have done wrong things we feel shameful about it but he took the shame he took the shame and the reproach he took that he took the guilt we don't have to carry guilt 
Because when we choose Jesus and say yes to Jesus, we have a brand new incorruptible seed placed inside of us and we're new. And so all of those sins of the past, they're past. We're going to talk about that today in Psalm 103. So he took all of that upon his body on the cross. On his body, he completed the old covenant so that we have the privilege. We're going to share with this, we get to walk in the new covenant. So, Jesus, we remember you. We take this and remember all that you took for us on your body, on the cross. And when it was all placed upon you, it was so difficult for the Father, he couldn't even look. And you said, it is finished. So, Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, that you took all of that. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to help us walk and live in everything that you provided for us, Jesus. We say thank you and we honor you. Yes. Let's eat. Is that Miss Vicky? I think that's what it meant. Yeah. Coffee. Or tea. And then, as we talked about often, it was a particular cup he took. Mm -hmm. It was the cup after the supper. It was the redemption cup. The fourth cup. Hello. You got all the goats? It was the redemption cup. And he said, this is my blood yes. of the new covenant. And I'm not going to drink this again until I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. And a lot of us really don't necessarily understand. Within all of that he said in this part of what we celebrate in what we call communion, there's a lot of bridal references that Jesus was mentioning. And so, because he shed his blood for us, which is the blood of the new covenant, and we get to walk in the new covenant, because he shed his blood for us when he was pierced from his side, we get to have that incorruptible seed, which is the DNA of the Father, the DNA of the donor, which is the Father's DNA, placed inside of us. And we actually become children of the Most High God. We become then one of the same kind so that Jesus can choose us for his bride because we are of the same kind. So Jesus, you said when we do this to remember you and we are remembering you, we are remembering, Jesus, that you shed your blood for us, which gives us the opportunity to say yes to you and when we say yes to you, we have incorruptible seed, your DNA placed inside of us, which makes us children of the Most High God, which makes us one of the same kind, so that we can be your bride and live with you forever. Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you died, taking all our stuff. Thank you that you rose again, victorious champion. And thank you that you gave us the gift of Holy Spirit who raised you and exploded you from the tomb in power and majesty to live inside of us. So Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you. So, Vicki, is it better to say Maria? Maria. Vicki. Hi. Nice to meet you. And um, she's from Costa Rica. <laughs> to learn about Costa Rica. <laughs> yes. Welcome to all who have joined. Pam, love you. And one of these days we need to hear her testimony because she escaped from Nicaragua, a communist country. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I bet it would be interesting to listen to her and she need to compare stories. I missed something. What about Nicaragua? 
Uh, she's originally from, she escaped from Nicaragua Communist Council. Oh, that's true, yeah. So she has testimony, and I was just thinking, wouldn't it be fun to listen to her and to be to compare their stories mm -hmm. and talk about the miracles, because I know they all had miracles. Your name was in here, but she, her name got picked. I know. <laughs> Teresa is um, training new employees. So I know we're talking about Psalm 103, and so, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, but you know how I, I read like a lot of books at the same time? Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, so yesterday I was reading in Practice of the Presence and um, The Pursuit of God, A.W. Hey. Tozer. And so I just want to read a little bit out of this. This is in practice of his presence, the practice of the presence with Brother Lawrence. This is the 11th letter. And I just thought it was really powerful. And so it has nothing to do, but maybe something to do with Psalm 103. But I just have to read it. Dear friend, since you are so seriously interested in knowing how I attained the ability that God granted me to dwell in his presence, because isn't that what we want? Don't we just want to like hang out in his presence all the time? I do anyway. I will try to explain it, but I must ask you not to show my letter to anyone, although we're reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fine. If I thought you were going to let someone else read it, I would not discuss the matter despite all my desire for your spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Although I found several books describing how to know God and mature spiritually, I believed they would only serve to confuse my soul. What I wanted was simply to belong totally to God. Mm -hmm. So I decided to give everything I could give in order to attain the greatest blessing in return, which is knowing Him. I gave myself completely to God, accepting His forgiveness of my sin after which I renounced everything that might offend him. I began to live as if there was no one but God and myself in the whole world. Sometimes I thought of myself as a criminal standing before him, my judge. At other times I regarded him as my father. I tried to keep my heart in this father-child relationship as much as I could, adoring him there. I held my spirit in his holy presence, recalling it whenever it went astray. This exercise was rather difficult, yet I was able to continue it without being disturbed when I was involuntarily dis distracted. Mm -hmm. It occupied as much time during my regular working day as it did in my prayer time. At all times, every hour, every minute, I drove everything out of my spirit that might take me from the thought of God. This has been my everyday routine since I began my walk with the Lord, although Sometimes I practice it timidly and with a great many mistakes. I'm still quite blessed by it. This has to be due to the great goodness and mercy of God. We can indeed do nothing without Him, which is truer for me than others. Yet when we faithfully keep ourselves in His holy presence and always remember that He is before us, we avoid offending Him, at least voluntarily then we may take the holy liberty of asking him for the grace that we need. By continuing this practice of his presence, he becomes more familiar to us, and his presence becomes a natural thing. Thank God for his goodness to us. Yeah. Thank God. And so then, in this chapter that I was reading in The Pursuit of God, I'm just going to read this one little section, which was like, oh, come on. God wills that we should push on into his presence and live our whole life there. This is to be known to us in conscious experience. It is more than a doctrine to be held. It is a life to be enjoyed every moment of every day. The greatest fact of the tabernacle was that Jehovah was there. This is, I skipped it. Here. Jehovah was there. A presence was waiting within the veil. Similarly, the presence of God is the central fact of Christianity. And then over here, there's this one line, and it's really quite true. The world is perishing for the lack of knowledge of God, and the church is famishing for want of his presence. 
we should become suddenly aware that we are in God and that God is in us. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't read Brother Moritz or if you haven't read A.W. Tozer, they're both quite worth reading. Isn't that nice? This was a gift to my husband from a friend. He made it himself, obviously, for this. Um, anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. At least kind of nothing to do, but maybe something to do with Psalm 103. Um, any questions or thoughts from the last time we talked about verses 1 through 5? <laughs> <laughs> we only got through 5. <laughs> I know. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was really good that we yeah. went a little slower so that I could absorb. Yeah, there was a lot that. there. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to memorize verses 3 through 5 because the first two verses are easy to memorize. Right. But uh, forgives, heals, redeems, crowns, and satisfies. I know. And, and it says... Don't forget any of these. Forget not all, don't forget these. So we should ponder it often. And so it's good that we that you are trying to memorize it because we, we should remember it. Mm-hmm. And you know, when we were doing communion, he paid such a price. Jesus paid such a price so that we could walk in that total forgiveness so that we can walk in healing of all our diseases so that we can walk in that redeemed life and then he crowns us and it's not with hard stuff with tender mercies oh my goodness and he fills and satisfies all of our needs with good things like in Psalm 23 first verse because he's my shepherd, I will not want or lack any good thing. I'm like, oh, hooray. Shigitu's um, grandkids came to our Sunday morning thing in Fergus Falls. And so I was asking them, and they're. Oh, sorry. It's okay. It's for. Yeah, yeah she was putting on her into Yeah. And, and so I was asking them their favorite verses and he said her older grandson David said, can I just say Psalm 23 yes of course but I also really liked at the end oh my goodness it was really appropriate because it was my birthday <laughs> that he our youth is renewed like the evil yeah. I mean you know we, we tend to We actually live by the fruit of our mouth many times because our heart is going to believe and receive what our heart hears our mouth and our voice speak, you know? And so how many times have we gone around like, oh man, that just kills me, you know? We, we should listen to what we're saying, you know? Or, oh yeah, I'm getting older, so this is da-da-da-da-da. But right here it says... Oh, our youth is renewed like the eagle. So why don't we kind of say those things out of our mouth rather than the things that we always tend to just say out of habit, you know? The blessing and curse, the blessing and cursing book, the blessing book, remember? Speak life over yeah. yourself. Speak life over ourselves, you know? And he said right here that our youth is renewed like the, the eagle. eagles. You know, but we say, oh, you know, it just happens, I'm getting older, you know. I have aches and pains, I'm getting older. You know, and so we receive it. We believe it. We anticipate it. Well, why don't we anticipate our youth being renewed like the evil? I I, I like that one. Then I can chase a goat. I think my youth's being renewed like the eagle. Yeah. There you go, Vicky. (laughs) And, you know, like... Curtis would, would laugh at me that I said, well, you know, I, I'd like to receive the Sarah anointing, you know, <laughs> or Rebecca. He said, that's fine, just no kids. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but honestly, she was 90 
and then was apparently so beautiful at 90 that the Pharaoh wanted her to be part of his harem. Mm -hmm. He's not going to want an old hag. <laughs> right? Well, he's not. Oh, he's not. No. Because he can have anybody he wants. Yeah. So her youth was way renewed. And then not only that, she was able to conceive a child, birth a child, and nurse a child. <laughs> So, okay. So that's youth being renewed like the eagles. I'd like to stand on that one. So, okay, let's read. We, we read all of Psalm 103 last time. So I'm not going to say we're going to read the whole thing because we've already taken up a lot of time. So let's start with verse 6. Verse 6 through 12 in the New King James says this. Well, I do have to just read. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And again, you know, he had to remind himself. Sometimes we just have to remind ourselves. I'm, I'm back at verse one. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all, not just upon some of them, all your iniquities. He heals all, mm -hmm. not just a few, of your diseases. And in your Bible, if you haven't, you should really circle all. Mm -hmm. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And he satisfies your mouth with good things. And your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay, verse 6 through 12. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for how many who are oppressed? Uh, for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. We're going to hang out on that one for a little bit. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Is he mean? Nope. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in what? Mercy. 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 He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Thank you. Nor punished us according to our iniquities. Thank you. For as, listen to this, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. That word for fear is reverential awe. Mm -hmm. As far mm -hmm. as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my goodness. Isn't that, a, I mean, and, and we like to hold on to our stuff. Why? It says he... He doesn't remember our sins. He's thrown our sins as far away as the east is from the west. Why do we want to hold on to it? Because, like we talked about before, you become like what you look at the most. If what you're looking at is your past sins, that's you're going to continue in it. Yes. But if you are going to hold on to, oh, I am new in Christ, so now I have the right. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. If I choose to look at that, I'm going to become and walk and live like that. Oh, much better. Much better. Much better. Okay, I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. You are a God who makes things right. Giving justice to the defenseless. Isn't that great? You unveiled to Moses your plans and showed Israel's sons what you could do. Lord, you are so kind and tender-hearted and so patient, even with the people who fail you. Your love is like a flooding river overflowing its banks with kindness. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so that you can hold a grudge against us. Like, oh my goodness. Isn't that awesome? He doesn't even hold a grudge against us when we make big mistakes or little mistakes. You may discipline us for our many sins, but never as much as we really deserve, nor do you get even with us for what we've done. Higher than the highest heavens. That's how high your tender mercy extends. Greater than the grandeur of heaven. Above is the greatness of your royal love. Towering over all who fear you and bow down before you. Farther than from a sunset to a sunrise. That's how far you have removed guilt from us. Isn't that nice? I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. 
I, I like to read the other translations because it just kind of gives it a richer color sometimes. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. So, to me it's really powerful. Because we seem to tend to want to hold on to our past junk. And God has thrown it away into the sea of forgetfulness. So I think that's a big thing. Is that a, a, a judgment that comes against us at the same time if we can't let it go? Because it does say, as far as the East is from the West, it's forgotten from Him. But if we can't let it go, then where do you fit into that next with Him? We hold on. We are just hold, He's forgotten it. We are holding on to it. And so we do not allow ourselves we tie ourselves to the curse of it the judgment of it, the guilt of it, the shame of it the consequence we tie ourselves to the consequences of it I'm not, not to say that just because you get saved consequences of actions are still there but there are times when God has delivered us even from the consequences of our mistakes and past so do, at the same time, how, you know you're forgiven, right? Mm -hmm. We know that. But we know we're here, here, but yes. maybe not here. So where do you begin to overcome that? You know what I'm saying? Process. It is a yeah. process. Because it's not, for some people, it's just not overnight. No, it's not. You know. And it's one of those things, because the enemy is all about pointing fingers at you. Satan, Lucifer, the demonic realm, is all about pointing fingers at you and keeping you carrying the baggage. But when he reminds you of it, what you say, oh, no, I was born from above. That's not me anymore. You just remind yourself and remind the entity that's telling you that, oh, no, I am born from above. I'm a child of the Most High God. I am new. I am no longer. That's not me. And it is a process. It is a process. Because the enemy is trying to tell you, oh, you are no good. Look what you did. This is all your work. You're just, work, you know, blah, blah, blah. And heaping all this junk. junk on you, wanting you to own it and wanting you to carry it. And then you look at that every day in the mirror and then you become like that. You become walking like that. You act according to that because that's what you're looking at. But you need to remind yourself, just like she's remembering, she, she's memorizing those verses at the beginning that talk about all the things he's done. And it, it might be for a season, not a legalistic thing that you do, but when the Lord reminds you of who you are in Christ, Write it down, and then in the tape it on your mirror. That you know when you're putting on your makeup. Oh yeah, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I am healed by His stripes. Oh, I am clean and holy. Oh, remind yourself of those. Put those little notes everywhere so you can remind yourself. So that when the devil and the demonic realm comes to tell you and remind you of these bad things, you go, Oh no, no, no! Look right over here. Look at it's written down. And and here, I'm clean. Oh look, I'm forgiven. Yeah. I think the one that I would put on my mirror is, I'm a daughter of the Most High God. Yeah. And it, that's one of those things that we should actually sit and ponder that for just a little bit. 
because of Jesus Christ and the cross and the empty tomb, and because we have said yes and received it and believed in our heart, we have that incorruptible seed, which is the DNA of the donor, which is DNA from Father. We are an actual daughter of the Most High God Creator of the universe. Oh my goodness. Papa, who is, as we are reading here, full of tender mercy and loving kindness, slow to anger when we make a mistake. And he's not going to hold those mistakes. He's our dad. He's Papa. We really can run and sit in his lap whenever we feel the need and let him hold us and comfort us and strengthen us. We really can. And he's a good, good father, just like the song. He's a good, good dad. He will train us. He will correct us when it's needed. But he's a good father. He corrects in love. We can also remember, I like this one too, the very same exact Holy Spirit that exploded Jesus from the tomb. And don't you know that the devil had every one of his demons in hell trying to hold Jesus down. So that very same Holy Spirit that conquered everything that the devil had all at one time. That same Holy Spirit lives here. Same Holy Spirit lives here. That's another thing we should just ponder for a while. So, why do we let... Oh, somebody said something unkind to me. Okay. I have Holy Spirit living in me. It's fine. I'm good. No, I know. I know. But but we can get there. You know what? We can. We can. We can. It is easier said than done, yes. And it is a journey. It is a journey. And it's not going to happen overnight. But we can. I mean, look at David. So you're saying that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. Can I, can I ask you? Why don't you just bring it in here? Okay. I can't. You want me to bring the whole thing? Yeah. That is the goal. I mean, so look at David. Look at what he had done. He had killed Goliath, blessed the whole nation, because he was doing all kind of damage, right? He was given the king's daughter. But even at that, when he's playing and worshiping in front of King Saul, because King Saul had demons, and when David would worship, the demons would leave. Oh, but even while doing that, Oh, King Saul's throwing spears. So he had to learn to duck. I need to learn how to duck sometimes. Sometimes we just need to learn how to duck. Because the enemy sends stuff our way. And we yeah. just need to duck. Thank you. We just need to duck. Yeah. Look at this present I was given. I love my cup. <laughs> I love my cup. I use it every day. It's the best so, present ever. I can see we're not going to get very far again today. Okay. Um, That's okay. <laughs> I, I, like I love it in, in Passion Translation, verse 6. You are God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. New Living Translation says, giving justice to all those who were treated unfairly. How many of us have felt like we've been treated unfairly, right? How many times have we felt like we are the defenseless one? But right here, he, he gives righteousness and justice in our behalf. Which verse is this again? Verse 6. Verse 6 in the New King James says, Lord executes righteous, righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So what version was it? Justice to those who... The defenseless is passion. 
and treated unfairly as new living. Thanks, that's the one I wanted. I mean, how amazing is our Jesus? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because, you know, and that's what one of the enemy's tactics try to get me. Oh, it's all about me, poor me, poor me, woe is me, blah, 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 me, 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 me. I mean, that's what he tries to get us to do. <laughs> I don't see that in you, but. <laughs> when, you know what? When, when he comes at us, like it's a journey, when he comes at us with that crap. Oh, no. Oh. Because of Jesus, and I believe it, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, you know, they might have been unjust to me, but you know what? Jesus is my defender. Oh, I mean, yeah. I might have been treated unfairly, but God's my defense. He will give justice to me. And so I don't need to spend time because, as we all know, I, Curtis and I totally believe that the Lord is coming soon. So, which means there's a short amount of kingdom time. And so, why would I waste my beloved's kingdom time whining and crying about those tiny little things for me when there are people out here in the world that are going to go to hell for eternity? I don't need to carry that injustice. It, I have the king of kings on my side. I have the creator of the universe. That's my dad. I have the Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead living inside of me. So why should it matter to me if somebody says something unkind about me? Huh. I'm the King of Kings loves me. Woohoo! Right? Right? <laughs> Nobody answered. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and yes, it is a journey to get there. It is a journey. But we can. David did. He learned to duck. A lot of us just need to learn to duck. <laughs> I like Very that. Much. Duck. Duck. Because duck. the enemy. Will cover. Yeah. <laughs> the enemy is throwing spears at us all the time. And then Ephesians 6 talks about the breastplate of righteousness and it's going to quench all those fiery darts. When you said the word duck, I thought of how ducks have that oil on them, so things yes. just roll right Rolls off. Rolls of right off. Yes, yes. So we're ducks and eagles and <laughs> yes, yes, and sparrows. Yes. <laughs> he even cares about the sparrow. He, and he knows how many hairs are on our head, or not on our head if you're going bald. <laughs> I wonder if he knows how many hairs are on my leg. <laughs> I have none. I shaved them all off. <laughs> oh, silly us. I know. Okay. Verse 7. I want to hang on this one for a little bit. He made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. And to me, this is really a big deal. Moses basically had an intimate relationship with God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Talk with God. And, and I know we have talked about this um, before in the past um, when it comes to the day of Pentecost because it was meant to be, it was, a betrothal ceremony and, and they went through all of this process and everything and God said to the children of Israel, He wanted all of them to come before Him. And they said, Oh, Moses, that is too big and too much for us. You go talk to God and tell us what he said. They missed out. They missed out. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Moses knew God. The children of Israel just saw the stuff. I wonder if maybe a handful said, we'll go with you. What do you think would have happened? <laughs> huh? Well, Joshua yeah? was up there. Yeah. Sadly, that's too much of what has been happening in the body of Christ. Especially in the Western church, and especially in the churches that are not under persecution. 
we in the West have been so busy with, oh, all this stuff going on, and they go to church, and they love God, yes, and they do their Sunday morning thing, and they hear what the preacher said, they might glance or two once or twice at the Bible throughout the week, maybe, and that's about it. So they get to see stuff, but I want to know Him. I want to know His ways, so that when I get into a tight spot, I can say, oh, yes, Jesus I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, you have given me, it says in the word, angels to guard and protect me. Oh, yes, the angel of the Lord is camped all around me. I know that. Oh, I am Psalm 91 hanging out in your presence. And so I'm dwelling in your secret place and so I'm protected from the wiles of the enemy. Oh, yeah, Psalm 27, verse 1 and 2. And you set me high upon a rock so the king can't even get to me. I want to know him. I don't want to just see the stuff. But we in the body of Christ have been very guilty of saying, Oh yes, preacher, you go up, you ascend the mountain, you talk to God, come down, tell me what he said. There's still a lot up there on that mountain preaching people. I, I want, want to, to hear go up. I want to hear what he said. I want to hear him. I want to know him. How shallow it is. And if we are of the people that have just said, hey, dude, Moses, you go hear what he said, come down and tell us, then we're going to be just like the children of Israel that went up hoarding after other gods all the stinking time. Because they didn't have the depth of a relationship with God themselves. Moses, you go tell us what he said. You, you hear him tell us what he said. But they went up hoarding after other gods all the time. All the time. All the time. They had no root in themselves. And the church of the body of Christ, the Western church in the body of Christ, is sadly too much like that. And we are coming into times when we cannot be like that. We cannot. We will not stand strong if we are like that. And I think one really key thing, in my opinion, this is my opinion, not Joy's. She can agree with me if she wants. Memorize scripture. Yes. Because if the day comes where they censure us and take away our Bibles, have it hidden in our hearts. Yes, yes, that we might not sin against him. Yes. If you haven't read it, there's a powerful book you should read called The Insanity of God. And one of the stories um, in there, he it, he was a missionary to Somalia, which is a place that it was illegal to be a Christian. You'd be killed and murdered. He came from a place like that. And so... He went through a season and he wanted to discover and he interviewed a lot of Christians who had come through those areas. Um, like in Russia, it, you can be a Christian now, but he went and talked to people who had made it through during the Iron Curtain. But he went to China and met with some people who are still persecuted for being a Christian in the underground church and met with some of these people. But one of the stories, this is reminding me of that, one of the stories of the people in Russia, one of these men in Russia who had been a house church pastor, was arrested all the time. He would find anything that he could, scrap of paper, he'd, he'd scratch it in verses and put them out in, in the cell. Every morning he would wake up, face the east, and sing his heart song, which was a worship song, and pray and every out loud so everybody could hear and write verses, any verses that he could find and try to, so that the other prisoners could see him so that the, the guards could see them. Came a day that they were going to take him. There's a lot more to his story. They were going to take him out to execute him. They come to his door, his prison cell, open it up. They start marching him down the hallway. And the whole cell block of prisoners began to sing his heart song. Oh. Wow. And then they couldn't. They couldn't execute him, and they said, Who are you? Wow. So, the way America is going and the world is going, if the rapture doesn't happen soon, we could be in situations like that. And if you are like the children of Israel that said, Oh, Moses, go talk to God, come back and tell us what he said, but you don't have that root in yourself, you will and may not live. 
these people in China, actually, they, the, the house churches in China pray for the Church of America to have strength because they don't think we'll make it. Wrong. And you have experienced some of that. Shigitu has experienced some of that. <clears throat> So don't be like that. Don't be the Western Christian that has a little bit of Jesus on Sunday morning and maybe a little bit throughout the day. You know, really, we need to press in. Jesus paid a huge cost so that we can walk in victory no matter what. So that we can be strong no matter what. Anyways, that's not that. Um, verse 8, which in the New King James, does anybody have any more thoughts about that? I know that one's, um, I wasn't really liked on that one. <laughs> Christopher and I have had been having conversations about that too. He's really frustrated with the way American church is right at the moment. Mega church thing. He said, there's no depth. There's no depth. Because sometimes you go to church and there's no depth. You're not really learning anything. And you're not really growing in a relationship. It's just kind of light. Christianity light? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want Christianity light. I don't want Jesus light. I want Jesus all of it. Verse 8. Listen to this one. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He's slow to anger. He is abounding in mercy. And that big, that abounding, that's a big word. I'm going to read that again in Passion Translation. I'm going to read it slow. <laughs> Lord, you are so kind and tender-hearted. You are so patient with people who fail you. Have we ever felt like that? Mm -hmm. He is patient and tender-hearted, even with us who fail him. Your love is like a river overflowing its banks with kindness. The New Living says this. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. He is slow to get angry and he is filled with unfailing love. Even when we blow it. Even when we've made stupid mistakes, big mistakes. But he's even patient. And he is kind even then. <clears throat> and sadly, sadly, there are times that he is presented as God with the lightning bolt, great big finger. Don't you make a mistake or he's going to have a lightning bolt on you. Mm -hmm. But I see two people just think he's the God to blame and throw their... He's the Paul guy, in other words. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so hard to hear that. And people really believe that. Mm -hmm. Why did? How come? Why did you? It's like they aren't understanding who he truly is. Right. That is not who he is. He cannot do that. And I've explained even to my own family, I go, he can't be God if he does that. And he's not the God who can accept sin. I go, he, he's, he's not accepting of sin. You want to be God. No. However, all of our sins are in the blood. Yes. And like people will blame God for the unrighteousness that goes on on the planet. Yeah. But, Psalm 1, um, 115, verse 16, or 116, verse 15, I never can remember which it is. It says, the heavens, the heavens belong to God, but the earth he gave to the children of men. So, what goes on on the planet, because even in, in Romans it says, all of creation is groaning for us to take our place, for the sons of God to take their place. That was Psalms 115, 16. Okay, so what, Psalm 115, verse 16, when people try to blame God for the ugly things going on. No. The heavens, 
The heavens belong to God, yes, but the earth he gave to the children of men. It is, the earth is responding to how much unrighteousness and sin we are permitting. The earth and the planet, the weather, is responding to how much unrighteousness we, we. the righteousness of God in Christ, are permitting. So we can't blame God for the ugly things that go on on the planet. Because the earth he gave to the children of men. Adam gave up the authority of the planet to Lucifer in the garden. Jesus, on the cross, got it back. And we are in Christ and we have that authority, but we don't use it. We don't know who we are. We don't know who lives inside of us. We need to know who lives inside of us, who we are in Christ, and who Christ is in us. Because the earth is groaning for us to take our place, it says in Romans chapter 1. I think some examples of walking in that, mm -hmm. like, you know, walking in blessing, mm -hmm. blessing people and not cursing people. Yes. Because witchcraft is cursing people. Yes. And we don't want to come in that spirit. No. We want to walk in the spirit of God, blessing people. Even when we, even when it's hard. Even like washing Judas's feet before you know what he's going to do and betray you shortly. I still cry when I think about it. So thinking about authority as a believer, I think so many people haven't been taught how to, what does that look like? Right. You know, right. walking in our authority, knowing that because of what Jesus did on the cross, that we can pray for people for healing mm -hmm. and that that is walking in authority. Yes. Yes. And walking in forgiveness is a big thing too. Mm -hmm. Because when we hold on to unforgiveness more than hurting the other person it hurts our own heart. Walking in forgiveness is a huge thing. It, it, it unties the tie that we have to the action. Doesn't make the action right. But it loses its power. It loses its power over us. We're no longer tied to it. If we are holding in forgiveness for something, we're tying ourselves to it. So does that... Um, in the realm of unbelief, unbelievers, and you pray this, can it lose that power over them also? I have an example. Yes. <laughs> when I first was walking with the Lord back when I was in my 20s, I had a sister-in-law that had the same name as me, and we couldn't stand each other. And someone prayed with me about unforgiveness, and I got set free, so I started praying for this sister-in-law. And she got saved, and later she said to me, you changed toward me, and that's why I wanted what you had. But that was the spirit of unforgiveness that had a grip on me that got got off of me, and she saw Jesus. So wow. I think that when wow. you forgive, it does change something. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get to it today, but at the end of <laughs> Psalm 103, it talks about the angels hearkening into the voice of his word. We can dispatch the angels. We'll talk about that. What time is it? 10 21. Okay, we, oh, we have, we have time. Yeah. So, anyways, when we get there, and we'll talk about it more then, it says in here the angels. It's like verse um, 20 or something. It says, The angels hearken unto the voice of his word. And the word for voice actually means spoken. Spoken. So we can... Ask the Lord to give us particular verses, which is his word, right? Mm -hmm. That we can pray over people. 
that we can pray over our family and we can speak it out loud. <clears throat> and that's why I like that Vicki is doing what she and uh, uh, remember uh, trying to memorize those verses because mm -hmm. she said she said that I'm reading over and over. And I'm going. That's actually a really good prayer. It is for your whole family. It is because there's so many that are in that that in category. category. I want to say category because there's so many people, not just the, you know your neighbors, your friends, and just the world in general, but your own family that are unsaved, that they just are so deceived by the lies of the enemy and they don't realize who God really is and what he wants to do for them. And sometimes it's like that, and I've never forgotten it, when um, Curtis spoke that Monday and we spoke about loved ones and you've told and told and you know, you've, you've spoken to him and spoken and you can do no more and you stand because you're, you're praying now against principalities and powers of the air that are holding them captive in those areas. So when you're not, you don't have to speak to them anymore, you just speak this you over speak, them. You can come against the lies yeah. of the enemy. And you, you find the verses, ask Holy Spirit to give you the verses to pray over particular family members, right? Yeah. And speak it out loud. One writing what, on one, line here. I, I know you guys, you know, we're not hospice chaplain, and even since then, I'm reading another one too. I like to read stories of near-death experiences, people who, you know, had these heavy experiences come back, mm -hmm. and the, one, this one guy, when he was, had his, when he was, had his, when he had been dead, before he came back, he saw these areas where there was like myriads of angels kind of standing ready, and he would see all of a sudden one would go and come back, and go and come back, because there was a word spoken, and they were attending to that and coming back. So, the, and I've seen different pictures of it, but the whole idea that there are angels standing ready for us to give them something to do. Yeah. Because angels hearken into the voice of his word. So th this was a test that I don't know if this really relates to this so much, but I I'm just reminded we were, when we were at Christ of the Nations, there was a testimony that we had heard of this guy who, was, who would smuggle Bibles into these places where, you know, you couldn't have a Bible. And um, they were in this area walking down the street and all of a sudden here comes like a black car and these people with their black coats get out with their guns ready to mow them down shooting point blank at them everybody else around saw a bright light and behind them were liquid pools of blood <laughs> cool <laughs> yes So we have so much more at, I'm not going to say at our disposal, but oh my goodness, the things that Jesus has died and taken upon himself, he was buried, resurrected in power and authority given the name above every name, and he said all power and authority has been given to me here, here. And we go around, oh, you don't know the name, he's been giving me mind about it for weeks and days. Hey, you stop telling them all my story. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of walking in the victory that he's already given us, no matter the circumstances, because right, it is, sir, Jordan Peterson, who's now a believer, I don't know if you know who he is, he's a brilliant man, and he's from Canada, and he's, he's a psychologist, psychiatrist, and uh, but he's brilliant, and he's a, a defender of conservative right thinking and the work. He's been told he has to go to um, re-education camp. What? Wow. He's taking them to court about it. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they want to indoctrinate him. Yes. 
because his words are, are painful and hurtful to people. Which they're not, but. So yeah. So if we are of the people that are like, oh Moses, you go talk to God, come back and tell us what he said. If we are those kind of people, we are not gonna stand when stuff comes, we won't. We need to be deeper than that, stronger than that. Okay, we're not getting very far. That's verse eight. <laughs> So, but anyways, he is merciful, he is gracious, and he is slow to anger. We make mistakes. Yes, we make mistakes. David made big mistakes, but still called a man after God's own heart, the one who wrote this right here. So he is slow to anger. He is not God. Don't let religion paint the picture that he's mean. He is not mean. He is righteous. He is not mean, and he is slow to anger. He is abounding in mercy and kindness. The funny us. thing is, is that people w want that kind of God to bend to what they want in life. It's like, that's the kind of God I want. I'm doing right. X, Y, and Z, and I feel good, so I want God to agree with everything I'm doing. He's not going to agree and with He's not going to do that. No, He does not agree with don't get it. No. And, and the thing is, that is still a person who said, okay, you go talk to God, come back and tell me what He said. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pick and choose what I want out of that. And then you go a whoring after other gods all the time. But when you yourself have had that relationship with him, you become more like him. You become like who you hang out with. You become like who you hang out with. And then your desires change. Because you're not that old person anymore. You're a new person. And when you're a girl, you're a girl. Nothing else. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen to that. <laughs> and when you're a boy, you're a boy. Nothing else. Um, okay. Verse 9. He's not always going to strive with us. And nor will he keep his anger forever. And I like this also in the Passion. Listen to this in the Passion. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so that you can hold a grudge against us. I mean, sometimes we feel like he's holding things over our head, don't we? He is not. He is not holding a grudge against us. Verse 9 in um, New Living Translation says, He will not constantly accuse us. So when we have these times in our life when we feel like there's a pointing finger at us for all of our stupid mistakes, who is the accuser of the brethren? It's not Jesus. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us every day, every moment. Oh my goodness. Think about that for a while. Jesus, Yeshua, the Word who was made flesh, the Son of God is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. For you. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's pretty amazing. That's another one of those things we should spend some time just pondering. Jesus. Yeshua is making intercession for me, for you. Wow. That's a very big thought, isn't it? Yeah. Just thinking about this. I know. <coughs> and I bet he plays a good prayer. Right? Verse 10. Also quite powerful. <sighs> he does not deal with us according to our sins, nor does he punish us according to our iniquities. Passion Translation says, You may discipline us for all of our many sins, but never as much as we really deserve, nor do you even get nor do you get even with us for what we've done. 
And how often do we try to get even with people because of what they did to us? Oh yeah, Jesus, he washed Judas' feet. But I think that is pretty powerful. Verse 10. He does not deal with us according to our sins. How does he deal with us? He deals with us according to whether we have chosen Jesus and received the forgiveness of the cross or not. That's how he deals with us according to the cross in the empty tomb. Not according to our sin. He according he deals with us according to our belief in Jesus. Verse eleven. Any any more thoughts about that, anybody? And again, because again, we still like to hold on to our stupid stuff. And we like to hold on to everybody else's stupid stuff, too. One of the things that I've been praying a lot is, is, Lord, help me to see each other, including myself, as you see me and others. Because Paul said, I know no man by the flesh, I know them by the spirit. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? He knows them according to who they are in Christ, not who they are because of their stupid mistakes. Verse 11, pretty powerful. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. That word fear means to reverentially worship and awe him. Um, in the Passion Translation, this is kind of cool. Higher than the highest heavens, that's how your tender mercy extends. Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of, I like this, of your loyal love, towering over all who fear you and bow down before you. His loyal love. He is faithful. He is faithful. Very much so. So, if he has sent our sins as far as the east is from the west. Another verse says that he's thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness. Our mistakes, our sins. And why do we keep holding on to them? Why do we? Why do we? I don't know why we do. Because the enemy likes to keep reminding us of it. And if we are holding on to it, we're tying ourselves to that. Father has forgotten it. Jesus' blood took care of it. I had a dream one time, not that long ago, that I was trying to put my husband in the kitchen sink. <laughs> I, I took that to mean stop dragging everything plus the kitchen sink back up all the time. So I've been trying not to keep a count, not to keep a record of wrongs, but to look at him in the right way. Yeah. And, and, and so, uh, Forgive quicker. It, um, uh, like you said, how, it's, is it easy? Not always. No. It gets easier more often and the more you walk there. Is it going to be easy right away? No. But, oh, guess who lives inside? Oh, Holy Spirit. He's a big help. He's a big comforter. And he's stronger than we know that lives in here which gives us more strength we we are we just don't know who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us we just don't know that and we because we don't because we've said yeah Moses you go talk to them come back and tell me because we don't know ourselves we don't know that every time the enemy comes at you oh you stupid oh yeah and then we receive it Instead of saying, oh, no, not me. That's the old me. That's dead. Just like Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I that live. It's Christ that lives in me. So that's who I am now. No, that's not me. And we have let the enemy run roughshod <coughs> all over us. 
and we don't have to. Because, oh, look here. He's thrown all my sins as far as the east is from the west. He threw them in the sea of forgetfulness. So when the enemy comes at you with that stuff, oh, nope. Not me. I don't receive it. Nope. Because he would like us to live in guilt and condemnation and the weight of sin. He would like us to stay there. Because if we don't stay there and we remember who we really are, then we are much more effective for the kingdom. And we walk in authority. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can remember. We can remember. Yeah. For instance, th this is just of what's coming here, okay? Brad, Sunday, shared a thing on Facebook, and it was something. And if Sam Walton had been alive, he would have been so mad. It was in St. Cloud, because you know St. Cloud has a big small inn and things there. This kid was in the checkout counter, had a cross. And the person in the checkout had the Habib thing, mm -hmm. you know? And she said, I'm not going to take you out until you hide that cross. He said, no. I'm not going to ask you to take off your thing. I'm like, no. Well, I'm not going to check you out. And anyways, there, there was some little interaction there. And then the manager of the store said, yeah, you need to hide your cross. Sam would have been so mad. So he said, he left. And everybody behind him left, left. all their stuff and just left. Wow. That they left. Yes. So, in an instance like that, would you have hidden your cross? If you were, you know, I mean, just that. That kid could have hidden his cross. No. No. This means everything say, I give glory to God, the true God. He is the one and only God. Yeah. You take off whatever you're wearing. That represents And let that. Jesus fill you up. <laughs> right, right. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, so goodbye, here's your if, stuff. <laughs> if, if we have been in a place where we have been like the children of Israel, Moses, you talk to God, come back and tell me what he says, you might have been one of You okay. might have, because... Well, especially everybody's trying to teach us and indoctrinate us that we can't offend anybody. And we can't, but they can offend us all they want to. Yeah. They can offend us all they want to, but we can't. Well, excuse me, Jesus was kind of offensive to the righteous, to the Pharisees. He didn't put up with stupid stuff. What did he call them? Hypocrites. Hypocrites, you. What was the other? Not only hypocrites, he called them something else. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, all kinds of things. Yeah. Dogs. Yeah, dogs. Yeah. What time is it? 22. Okay, so verse 12, we're kind of going the same thing. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far has he has removed all of our transgressions. Okay? Um, so, again, I'm going to say this again. He's removed our sins. As far as the east is from the west, and he's removed them. So why do we remember them? Why do we like to hang on to them? Why? Um, Isaiah 38, 17 says this. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. You have cast all of my sins behind your back. He has, say this with me, Father, you have lovingly delivered my soul. Father, Father you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption from the pit of, of corruption. corruption lovingly mm -hmm. lovingly father you have cast all my sins, all my sins. behind your back behind your back into the sea of forgetfulness into the sea of forgetfulness i will not remember them either i will not remember them either God said this to Isaiah in 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. That's what Father says. 
So do we think we're bigger than God that we get to remember those things that he's forgotten, he's chosen to forget? Micah 7, 19. He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. So we are like this. This guy that James was talking about, we have forgotten who we are. James 1.24. He observes himself in a mirror and he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he is. That's us. <clears throat> we, need to look, we need to look into the mirror of the word and find out what Father says about us when we have said yes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And look into that mirror all the time. 2 Corinthians 3.18, one of Curtis's favorites. But we all, with an unveiled face, the veil being the law, the veil being all of our um, guilt and shame, with an unveiled face, beholding in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And the word for glory is God's view and opinion, God's reality. It's a great big definition of a word, but... A small, easy to contain definition is God's reality, God's view, and opinion. So if we can look into that mirror and see God's view and opinion of who we are, God's reality over us of who we are because of the blood of Jesus, it says if we can do that and stay there looking at that, we are being transformed from the inside out into that same image. Because we become like what we look at the most. I guess we should stop there. We could go on. What time is it? Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I guess we should stop because I want to hang out for a while on um, some of these next verses. You don't get very far. It's always really good. Yeah. Okay. Um. Any thoughts or any questions? And yes, I do. Sharon, it's a journey. It's not an overnighter. It's not an overnighter. But we do have, oh yeah, we have the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, who is our comfort and our help. Our teacher and our leader and our guide. I, th I you know, sometimes I think to myself, it's not so much me thinking about if God first has forgiven me. It's more for others. I want that for others. Yes. That type of forgiveness for them. And to realize that they have that forgiveness. Yes. You know, but it's not forgiveness and say continue on in your what you're still doing because they are still under such a that cloud. They just can't see through it. It's getting darker and darker, that cloud, and they're not able to pass through it. Your testimony was really powerful about that. You asked Father to give you the forgiveness for her and then she saw a change in you which caused her to want that change. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah. It, it didn't just affect her, her whole family that soon. Yay. Yeah. And, and so, no, it, it does not mean when, when we walk in forgiveness it doesn't make the action righteous or right or anything. It doesn't condone the action. But it cuts me off from the action mm -hmm. and allows me to change my heart and doesn't tie me to it and allows there to be healing in my heart, which is a big thing. Then, if there's healing in my heart, then for sure, I can have different responses to these people that they can see. And it doesn't mean that love and forgiveness condones unrighteous actions by these other people that might continue. But goes into like what we're going to talk about next week. First of all, speaking out loud over them and, and asking Holy Spirit. I think this is a big thing. Because re remember in How to Stop the Pain and Search for Significance, we have all become what we have allowed our environment to make us be, including them. And I think that's very significant also for Maria with her son and the daughter-in-law. Just speak that because God can restore that. Yes. Yes. Because when they've said yes mm -hmm. to Jesus, 
he will never leave them nor forsake them. That's what that his word true. says. That is he true. will never. And what's never? Mm -hmm. what's, that's a never. It's never. It's a big word. He's like all. It's a big word. And I, I, mm -hmm. use, I use that. Amen. I use that with my kids. And because I know who said yes. And I tell him, I go, he, he's not, he's going to continue to pursue you because you said yes. You, he left the 99 to pursue you, the one. I go, and he's going to continue to do that until you realize who you are and who you were made to be. I think that over all my kids. Yes. Every one of them. And so just like Paul yes. said, I choose to know no man by the flesh. I choose to know men, know you by the spirit. That's what he said. And sometimes that's difficult to choose to not see them by their really stupid actions. Yeah. But sometimes the actions are stupid and not very nice. But he said, I do Jesus to know no man by the flesh, but by the Spirit. And so that's when we say, Holy Spirit, first of all, who did you create me to be so that I can be what you created me to be? My phone's going dead. So I can be who you created me to be. And then help me, Holy Spirit, to see Rigo, who you created Rigo to be. And let me speak that over him and speak it out loud and ask Holy Spirit to send ministering spirits across each one of their paths to remind them who they are, whether it is an angel talking in their ear or an angel causing somebody else to come across their path just to say something or to bring something across whatever they're watching. Like, hmm, because you know, e e even though there's a lot of junk on, on YouTube and everything, there is some good stuff on there, and sometimes they might just happen to come across something that is. What was that? What was that? There's a couple of kids' movies that were profound for me. Um, Meet the Robinsons. <coughs> Keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. That just stuck in my head. And then uh, Lion King. Remember who you are. Yes. Yes. And Hook. Yeah. Hook. <laughs> and, and when he looked in the water, he actually saw, oh, that's who I'm he had lost who he was. And a lot of us have just really, because that's such an important, we don't know who we are, and we don't know who they are. And we need to ask Holy Spirit to show us, who are they? Who am I? Help me to become that. Help me to hold that in front of my face so I can become who you made me to be. Help me to see them how you have created them to be so that I can speak that over them so that I can remind them who they really are in Christ. So how do you break off the fear of that? Because okay. sometimes there's a fear behind seeing what they're doing, and you fear for them. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I don't know if I'm saying it right, because you see see the path they're taking, and you know it's not good for them. Okay. And you want them to be righteous. Over, yes, I want and they'll overcome that, and then your mind starts thinking about the worst, and then they're thinking about <coughs> where it's going to go, and then, you know, and the... When it does happen, when Jesus comes, and I'm thinking about the hell experience. I'm going, I don't want that. So but first that. of all, first of all, number one, remember who you are in Christ. And how much authority was given to Jesus? Oh. How much did he give you? Yes. Okay, so we can bind um, the spirits of deception. We can bind the spirits of fear in Jesus' name. We can bind those things in Jesus' name. It does talk about angels that are given to each one of us. Okay. We can ask the angels given to each one of them to guard them, to protect them, to keep them safe from harm and danger, if the, even if that danger is themselves. Now, what did that one angel do um, with Balak? Was it Balaam? He stood in the way, and, and the donkey saw it, and he wouldn't let him through. One thing I often pray is asking that the angels could influence them, because, you know, Influence them to make the life like an increased choices, but to stand in their way and not let them make the death, dark, mystery, mm -hmm. decreased choices. Just to because, stand in their way. Because God commands them, right? They hearken he into the voice of his word. There you go. They hearken into the voice of his word. As we're going to talk about next week. Okay. But we have to speak it. Yeah. We have to speak it. So we can find... 
we can find scriptures that talk about these particular things and be the voice of the word and dispatch the angels on their behalf and on your own personal level remember that scripture casting down imaginations and every high thing so when these thoughts come at you mm -hmm. they make you fearful that's why I had to do this early morning as I started thinking. Going, and cast oh. it off of them as well. Yeah. Because how much authority do we have? Oh, and who lives inside of us? Spirit of living yeah. And Jesus. so we can cast things off of people. They have to choose to walk in it, okay? Yeah. But we can cast things off of people and then have that moment in time when angels can speak truth. I always pray it's buying the lies of the Lord and speaking lies to them. Yeah. It is. It's going to be about lies. Yeah, that way you leave them. If those lies are bound, you can hear the voice of the Lord speaking, mm -hmm. even though they don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. The truth comes forth. We can release Holy Spirit all over them to move upon their heart. To oh, soften yeah. their heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you pray us out? Go ahead, Vicki. Yeah. Bring it on down, girl. <clears throat> <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank Jesus. you right now that you yes. have a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. Yes. And that we will come into that plan because you love us and you want good things in our lives. We pray for good things in our children's lives and our friends and relatives, Lord. That you'd awaken their yes, hearts awaken to your love and That they mm -hmm. would hear Jesus. your voice. We bind the lies of the enemy mm -hmm. from speaking deceit and lies to them. And pray even right now that their ears would be open and you give them ears to hear mm -hmm. what the Jesus Spirit has right. to say. Mm -hmm. Bless our families Jesus, and yes. friends, Lord. Yes. And I pray right now a hedge of protection around them. And I pray, Lord God, that you guide us and lead us, help us meditate in your word, mm -hmm. that it would really become more and more real in our hearts as we trust that you're bringing us into a place of authority and knowing who you are in our lives. Yes, Lord. Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thanks for joining. Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parker's Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed.